This is Lone Conspirator, and welcome to another tutorial video. This is part three of a three-part series covering the medical modules of the ACE 3 mod for ARMA 3. This video is going to be somewhat longer than the first two because the advanced medical is more involved and has more steps and conditions. So let's get started. First, we need to change the module settings to advanced in the medical settings module. Uh, click the link that just popped up if you need help setting up the modules from scratch. I have a video in part one that will cover that. You just double click the module or the medical settings module and change medical level to advanced and medical settings to advanced. Click OK and that will change you from basic to advanced if you had your settings set up like I had for the basic video. You can set up the medical module so that anyone can completely heal anyone else with their personal aid kit, but that sort of defeats the purpose of setting up the medical modules in the first place. But I'm going to show you how to do it anyway, uh, or not show you how to set it up, but show you how it works. You should be able to figure it out if you look at the modules. What you're going to do is you're going to have, make sure you have a personal aid kit. You're going to walk up to the individual aim at his torso, go to personal aid kit, he'll be treated with the personal aid kit and as soon as he's done he will be completely healed 100%, blood stains will be removed and he'll be uh, just like he was brand new. And there he is, 100% didn't have to take him to a medical facility, didn't have to bandage him, didn't do anything but the personal aid kit. If you're looking for something a little more realistic, I don't advise setting it up this way. Uh, but you can, it's available if you want to do the meta gaming like that. The first thing you have to do with the casualty is you walk up, hit your Windows key, and check for a pulse. You find no heart rate. That means that this guy is essentially dead and we're just waiting for his timer to run out um, after which you won't be able to revive him. So the only thing that's going to save him is the, the use of a personal aid kit and I've got it set so that he has to either be at a medical vehicle or a medical facility. So what I'll do is I'll pick him up, and I'll carry him, and you'll notice here, I'll put him down, I'll release him, and if I try to treat him outside the vehicle, it won't work. He has to actually be inside. Doesn't give me the option for the personal aid kit. So once you get to the, the vehicle, you have to put the victim down on the ground, and then you go to his waist, and you select load patient. And that'll put him inside whatever vehicle you've designated as a medical. It would work the same way with the chopper. Then what you do is you get in the vehicle yourself, and you hit your Windows key. Select passengers, and then the name of the passenger that's uh, injured needs to be treated. It'll give you the, the uh, option to unload the patient or provide medical. We want to provide medical. Now, because we have it set so that he has to be stabilized before he can get a PAK kit, I have to bandage all these wounds. And if you highlight the injury, you'll notice up on the left it shows his body all the red areas are the places where he's got injuries. In this case we have his left leg highlighted. It's showing that he is bleeding and that means he could be bleeding anywhere on his body. He's lost lots of blood. He's in pain. 
uh, this particular limb has two large avulsions and two large velocity wounds. When you have a limb with more than one injury, just apply a tourniquet which will stop the bleeding in that limb so you can move on to the other injured parts of the body. Once you have bleeding and all the body parts stopped, go back to the limbs you apply tourniquets to, bandage them, then remove the tourniquets. Remember to remove the tourniquets after you've bandaged up the limbs because if you leave them on, it will cause pain to the to the soldier and then he will eventually pass out. It won't kill him, it doesn't make any kind of permanent damage, but if you have a guy that's walking around and suddenly passes out and he's not bleeding or anything, check to see if he's got tourniquets applied. Now you'll notice it went from red to white. Unlike the basic which goes from red to yellow to white, this stays red until you have everything bandaged up then it just goes to white. And if you look at the list on the left, you'll see that there's no more injuries in white. They've all been bandaged. And you'll also notice that now on the, the little diagram of his body, his leg is blue in color showing that it's been bandaged. Now, if you have advanced wounds on, then the leg will be blue, meaning that it can reopen for, if he's moving around or if you carry him. Uh, it, if you don't have any advanced wounds, then it'll go to a gray color, meaning he's all bandaged up and you don't have to worry about it anymore. So we'll continue with the other injuries. Now, all of these injuries that, that I'm bandaging, you could have another person in here providing this medical treatment while I was driving. So I could be driving the car while one or even probably two or three other people were in a vehicle, like the chopper, for example, that would hold more. And you could all be treating him en route to the medical facility. And with the way the state of the mod is right now, any bandage will work, and essentially every wound will take one bandage. So right now he has five medium avulsions and two medium velocity wounds left on his torso, which is a total of seven, so he'll need seven more bandages to stop the bleeding on his torso. doesn't matter what type they are, uh, and it just takes one of, of any bandage for each injury. You'll see now that the torso started bleeding again, so I have to go back and re-bandage that. That's an example of the advanced wounds and them reopening. Alright, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to finish up his stabilization outside of the medical facility, and then we'll apply the uh, personal aid kit to him there rather than in the vehicle just so that I can show you how the structure works as well as the vehicle. So now we're going to unload the patient. And we'll continue his treatment out here. Now if you look up the diagram, he's all blue and gray, no red, so he's all, all of his injuries have been bandaged. So now I'm going to carry him outside the entrance of the facility. Now even just outside the entrance, I still don't get that option for the personal aid kit. I have to bring him inside. Now we have to bandage this wound that opened up again because we won't get the option for the personal aid kit until all the bleeding is stopped. And you'll see now I've got him just inside the threshold and I've got the option to use the personal aid kit. He's not bleeding anywhere and he's inside a medical facility. It would be the same thing if he was inside that vehicle there, a medical vehicle or the chopper. So you just go to torso, use personal aid kit, Use personal aid kit, which is slow in being administered, and once this is done being administered to him, he will be 100% healed.
blood stains will be removed and you will be ready to go back into battle. And there you see he's back up on his feet, blood stains are removed, and he's ready to go back in the field. And if you check his pulse and blood pressure, you'll find that they're back to normal. Normal blood pressure is 120 over 80, which it is. And normal, normal pulse is about 80. Here it's 79, but normal pulse should be about 80. And if you look up in the left-hand corner, the body diagram is all gray again, showing that he's 100%. We have an injured soldier down. First thing we can do is go up, go to his head, check his pulse. You can also check at his arms. He's got a pulse of 81. And you notice up in the left-hand corner, the body shows torso, arm, and leg bleeding. He's lost a lot of blood, and he's in pain. So once you've got that all checked, then you move to the next step, which is to apply an IV. I always like to start with at least a thousand units if you have it. Once you have the IV going, check his blood pressure. His blood pressure is 95 over 64. It's not too bad yet. So we'll leave that. And he's got multiple injuries to this arm, so we'll just apply a tourniquet rather than a bandage. If you want, you can even tourniquet all the limbs, uh, regardless of the number of injuries. It'll be maybe a little faster for you that way. Um, but sometimes you don't want to have to come back, like I'll bandage this leg because uh, it'll be done. I don't have to come back and remove a tourniquet. That arm is good, so we'll go to the torso now. Double check his blood pressure. Eighty-eight over fifty-nine. His blood pressure is dropping. Now he's still showing his left arm is is um, injured. So we'll bandage that. Now, he's not bleeding from this limb, it's just showing that he's still injured because the tourniquet's on. And if you look on the left, in orange letters, it says tourniquet. So, he's not losing blood, but that tourniquet is going to have to be removed. So we have to stop the bleeding. I like to stop the bleeding first before I remove the tourniquet. We'll check his blood pressure. You need to keep checking on that frequently. 92 over 61, so his blood pressure is pretty stable. So we'll continue with the bandaging. And now all his wounds are bandaged, so we'll remove the tourniquet from his arm. Now he's lost a lot of blood, so we're going to have to make sure that he's continuing with his IV. Right now he's got 341 milliliters left. He's going to probably need at least 2,000 units of blood. But we'll treat for pain right now. He doesn't need epinephrine at the moment because his blood pressure is good so we can treat for pain. So we'll give him a shot of morphine. kind of hard to see this white text against this light background. Now the morphine, once he treat, uh, the morphine treated the pain, he, ha he had enough blood so he was able to regain consciousness. And 
it's still showing that he lost a lot of blood so I'm going to start another IV you can stack several IVs I could start like four IVs or more um, once the first one runs out the next one will automatically start so he's not showing any injuries and um, he's not in pain so he should still be treated with a personal aid kit to get rid of those uh, bandaged injuries so they don't open up again but he can go back to fight and defend himself until he can get treated by um, a medic for the bandaged wounds so what we can do at this point is we can tell him to come into the medical facility and then once he gets in here we can treat him for the bandaged wounds and get him back to 100%. Standing by. So now that he's in the facility, we'll go to his, his left arm's uh, open back up, so we'll provide a field dressing. Now, at any point, you could bring a injured soldier to a medical facility to give him a personal aid kit. You don't have to replenish all their blood or all that stuff. If he's close to a medical vehicle or a facility it's probably going to be faster to just stabilize him with bandages and get him to the personal aid kit so he's all healed up or he's all bandaged up again so let's go to his torso that'll give us the option for the personal aid kit and once this finishes being administered he'll be 100 percent And there you go. All the blood stains are gone. And if you check his vitals, his pulse is 80, which is normal. Blood pressure should be about 120 over 80, which it is. If you look up on the left, the little human figure is all gray now. So he's got no bandaged limbs and he's showing no pain or no blood loss that says torso no injuries on this body part and that'll apply to everything so he's 100 percent ready to go back to work I've created this flow chart to kind of illustrate the steps that you're gonna go through when you come upon a wounded person first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna check for a pulse now earlier we went through the steps that you go through when you have no pulse no pulse found you stabilize by bandaging all the wounds and then you treat them with a personal aid kit and that's going to depend on your settings whether it's at a facility or a vehicle or out in the field uh, it's just going to be based on how you set your modules up what we're going to address now is when you find somebody who does have a pulse in this case once we go through this phase we're going to have to do it very quickly because if a person's injured they're bleeding their blood pressure is dropping and they could go into cardiac arrest so you have to be quick with the treatment if he has a pulse then you have to check for bleeding and that's by looking at the little diagram of the human body in the upper left hand corner check to see what parts of the body are bleeding if he's bleeding I like to start a thousand units of blood or plasma or saline the, the documentation for ACE 3 says to start bandaging but I personally will start an IV a thousand units of blood before I start uh, doing anything else if you have more than one person with you have them start uh, applying bandages while you do the other parts of the treatment and then you can both work on bandaging. After you start the IV, check the blood pressure of the casualty. If the blood pressure is low, and I consider low to be 60 over 40, give them a shot of epinephrine. Or if you notice that his blood pressure is dropping, even if it's 100 over 80 or something like that, if you, if you check it and it's gone lower and it continues to go low, keep an eye on it. Once it gets to 60 over 40, I would say to give them a shot of epinephrine and that'll get his blood pressure back up. So once you've done that, you're going to deal with any bleeding. Now, if his blood pressure checked okay, start bandaging. If he's bleeding, start with the limbs. If you have a limb that has two or more injuries, just apply a tourniquet. If he only has one injury on the limb, go ahead and bandage it because it takes the same amount of time to apply a bandage as it does a tourniquet. Once you have all the limbs either bandaged or applied with a tourniquet, 
go to the head and torso and start to bandage those areas. Once those are all bandaged up, you're going to check your vitals again and make sure that the IV is still running. If he's run out of his IV, add another one. I found that if you come across a casualty that's unconscious, he's already lost quite a bit of blood, you're going to need at least 2,000 to 4,000 units of blood to get him back to normal possibly more. So once you have everything bandaged and the IVs are going, if his blood pressure is coming back to normal, which I would say if his, the top number is 70, you can treat for pain. If his blood pressure is low, giving him morphine for pain is going to lower it back down. You don't want to do that unless his blood pressure is high enough. So if he's in pain and his blood pressure is good, give him a shot of morphine. And at this point, he should regain consciousness. If he doesn't, then you, you need to continue with the IVs. If your person is unconscious and you've done all these steps, that means you have to wait for the blood to replenish or double check that he's not in pain and keep an eye out on injuries opening back up again. You have to make sure that all the bleeding continues to be uh, stopped. If, it's, if he starts bleeding again, you got to treat that. Time is of the essence, so you have to make sure that you do this quickly. Now, if he was more seriously wounded, his blood pressure would be plummeting very fast. So you have to make sure that you treat him quickly if he's, if he's more uh, seriously wounded. All right, so his blood pressure now is 59, so we'll give him a shot of epinephrine to boost the blood pressure. You see it's up to 62 over 42. And rising. That gives you time to start bandaging and giving him an IV. Now his arm will do a tourniquet since he's got two injuries. We'll bandage the torso. This should control the bleeding. Check his blood pressure. See his blood pressure is sort of hovering now around the mid-60s. Now we'll come back to the arm and finish bandaging it up and then remove the tourniquet. Now all his injuries are bandaged so we can remove the tourniquet. Also when you remove the tourniquet it goes back into your inventory. You don't lose it like the bandages. So he's lost lots of blood. And it's showing he still has almost 700 units of blood left so we'll start a second one. Check his pulse or his blood pressure I mean. 70 over 46 because now he's stopped bleeding his blood supply is increasing because we've started IVs so blood pressure will start going up and since his blood pressure is a top number of 70 or higher we'll go ahead and give him some morphine for pain blood pressure is 76 over 51 we'll give him another shot of epinephrine so now we just have to wait for his blood level to get up to a high enough level for him to regain consciousness. Because he's not in pain, he has lost lots of blood though. And at this point if you had other, other injured people you could start treating them. Because he is definitely stabilized and it's just a matter of time before he regains consciousness. Give him another shot of epinephrine to try to speed up the process of him regaining consciousness. Now if you give him too much epinephrine, it'll shoot his blood pressure way too high. We'll check his pulse. See 141 pulse. And that could kill him. So if you want to counteract that, you need some atropine, which will bring his pulse back down. Because you really don't want to be over 120 on his pulse. So we'll inject atrophine. Now his blood pressure is 88 over 58, but we want to check his pulse. Which is back down to 121. Blood pressure is slowly coming back up. So at this point it's just a matter of waiting. His pulse is still 121. We actually want that down to around 80, so let's give him some more atropine. His pulse is 
levels down to 106. Now, the best move would have been to just wait for his blood pressure to normalize rather than pump him up full of epinephrine, but I wanted to show you the results of putting too much. And if we had kept putting epinephrine in him, into him, his pulse would have gone through the roof and he eventually would have had cardiac arrest. So we'll check his pulse. Down to 105. His blood pressure is up to 89 over 59. So we'll give him another shot of atropine. The atropine is going to continue to lower his pulse rate and bring his heart rate down. And his heart rate is down to 89, which is much more reasonable. And there he is, he's conscious again. And at this point, you would treat him with a PAK as soon as you could because he still has bandaged wounds on his torso and his arm, which could open up again. So you want to treat that. You don't really have to give him any more blood at this point. It's not a bad idea. But um, you could just give him a pack kit, and that'll get him at 100% so you don't waste your blood supply. However, I would assume that most people, when they set up their server to play, would have medical supplies at, in the medical vehicle or at the medical facility. So if you're going to be transporting them to um, an area to be treated, you can resupply yourself anyway. So it's up to you on what you think is going to be necessary. Giving him more blood is probably not a bad idea because if you do run into more enemy units and he gets injured again he's he's going to go down much quicker because he's already at a low blood level. But that's going to be up to you and up to the way the server's set up. So there you have it. This is the general way to handle the advanced medical system in ACE 3 with the current version of this mod. I'll make updates to these videos as the mod is updated, so subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow me on Facebook for update notifications. Uh, also, check out parts one and two of this series if you haven't already. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you in the next video.